Hey everybody, welcome back to Sharon's Nail Boutique. If you're new here and haven't yet subscribed, you already know what to do. Smash the hell out of that subscribe button and while you're at it, don't forget to tickle that like button until it laughs hysterically. <laughs> welcome back everybody. And to all my existing subbies already, welcome back to another nail video, watch me work video. As you can see, I'm pushing all 10 cuticle back, being very gentle. This is my gorgeous, gorgeous client, Angela. And I just pushed back all 10 cuticles. I'm now going in with my cuticle ball bit on less than 3,000 RPMs, being very gentle. This is the only bit I use on the nail plate, okay? I would use my sanding bands on the tips just to thin them out nothing more nothing less so now you see me going in with my 100 150 grit hand file these are brand new i give each and every one of my clients brand new files every every time usually they sit down unless they're coming back often like every couple weeks and they can still use their same file however between clients i never use the same files i always give new files so as you can see she had a gel mani on there it was yellowing and stuff like that so all i needed to do was go in with my very gentle 150 grit side and remove that now these are nail sunshine hand files you can get these off ally express they're good for removing the shine they're good for buffing the surface getting it into shape you can use these to shape the free edge to shape your tips so on and so forth also to blend your tip into the nail plate so i'm just going through the nails now i'm showing you this really quick so you guys some people on here think that this is the same as a hand file now this is on 3000 rpms the lowest you could go basically see how much removal that did and i'm barely touching it now this is the difference between this and a hand file so for all of you that think that this is the same as a hand file, look at that. Now look at me use my hand file. Not only is the hand file different in the sense that, okay, it's only going in a rounded back and forth motion. It doesn't have a cylinder and a motor. So it's not constantly turning. The best way I could do is to show it to you guys. I know I talk about it all the time. But do you see the difference now? Those are scratches. What I did with the sanding band is totally removing layers of nail. You see the difference? Huge difference. I actually, you can see like divvies in my nail where it like took little chunks out. That's my point, guys. There, it, it, You can say whatever you want at the end of the day. It's not the same at all by any means, okay? It's scientifically, it's just impossible, so. Moving on, we're just removing the rest of that gel polish mani. She had just a gel, like a top coat gel mani type of thing. I think it was like a French. However, I'm just using the file to get that off the surface. We've already used our cuticle bit. So as soon as we're done with this, we will clean up. And we are using these new Infolila tips, guys. I will leave the link for these in the description index Say below. And these are Infolila's Pro Choice Luxe False Nails. It's the 200 clear kit of their false nails you can get these on amazon i will leave the links for these in the description index below these tips are amazing honestly i give them like a eight out of ten nine out of ten the reason i took some points away is because they're very thin um they do come with a two pack of glue which is amazing and i do believe that they actually there's only 10 slots here, but I think they go up to like a size 11 or something. So the super glue is awesome for gluing, gluing on stones, fabrics, your tips. There's so many things that you can use the nail glue for. Personally, I don't really like to glue on tips with the glue, but providing we are reviewing these tips, we're gonna use exactly what it came with. And honestly, I can't even complain. Infolila super glue compared to McCart is way better. Not only did it really really work well with their own tips it glued on beautifully the tips went on beautifully um yeah they're nice ballerina shape already so you don't have to do much in cutting them down and shaping them so i'm just showing you guys the shape the tip i really really like these nails i don't like how thin they are but it's neither here nor there so we're yeah, also yeah. doing <laughs> mccart's hook on love kit and we are using that glitter right there that beautiful pearlescent multi 
mix in there. And this kit comes with so many different glitter mixes for Valentine's Day, guys, and the stickers as well. Beautiful boxing, A plus on the boxing, McCart. You get a 15% off discount code in here. That's where you can find them on all their social medias, guys, if you wanna pause it and go back to that point and find them. They come with mixed hearts, mixed hearts with tinsel. They have three containers of heart-shaped stones. And I actually thought the stones only came in just one size. There's multiple sizes in these containers, guys. See the small hearts and then medium and big? Like, they go from small to big in there. So you get a small size, a medium size, and a big size. So I have sped that part up, but we're using that glitter right there. Okay, guys, and we're gonna be using our Glam and Glitz products in the Color Blend Collections in Perry Twinkle, Blew Me Away, Teal I'm Blue, and we're going to be using, um, gee whiz, what is that color? I think it's called Cutie. It's like a corally pink color. So I'm just sizing these tips now. She wanted them shorter, so we're cutting them down. We're gonna be not really uh, filing too much, guys. Just getting those into shape. I'm thinning um, them out, blending them into the nail bed, like so. And just watch that very carefully. I'm not doing too much, not taking off too much of that sidewall. When you get tips that are already pre-shaped and pre-pinched, you should try very hard not to take off too much of those side, not to clip off too much of the side walls, unless the tip is too big for the person's nail plate itself, then you can. But other than that, you should not be trying to remove too much of the side because that will take from the shape of the nail itself. So just blending these tips in, removing the shiny surface so that my acrylic has something better to adhere to. Gonna be going in with my OPI Bondade as normal one coat on all 10 nail plates, and then two coats of my No Lift Nails Acid Base Primer. Wait till it dries a little bit and then go in with my Mia Secret Clear Acrylic Polymer. And then I'm also using my Mia Secret Liquid Violet Monomer, MMA free. Very important to remember guys because MMA is an illegal product and it's a very, very bad chemical, really bad for the nails guys. So got to be really really careful when you're going into some of these chop shops because they do use those products and they will destroy your nails so just be very careful when you're sitting down in some of these places that you know what to look for um, in watching my videos I explain a lot of times um, certain things you should be on the lookout for um, because if you notice them doing it you should definitely get up and walk out so just going in now with the No Lift Nails Acid Base Primer before my small, wet, thin, clear base. And just going in with a small, wet bead, guys, pushing all the way up as far as I can until I'm happy and then pulling the rest of that down. Just putting a thin, clear base over these nails, guys, so that we have something to file back down to in between designs and also so that, depending on the color, it does not stain her nail plate. So just keep that in mind, guys. Very, very important. And I guess if you're using strength core powders, you don't really need to do this step. If you if you soak a lot in between each set, then I don't think you really need to do this. However, I always do this step just because it gives you that nice um, structure to start off with, a nice, thin, even base. And there's nothing better than that, in my opinion. So just being really mindful of how I lay it, how uh, wet my bead is, just pay attention to your liquid powder ratio, your sidewalls and the brush you're using. The one I'm using is my number 14 pinch, it's pre-pinched. I got it off of Ally Express from a place called Evel Nail Art Supplies and I will leave the link for this brush as well in the description index below as I always do guys. Everything that I possibly can leave for you down there, I will. And now I'm just moving on to the next hand and starting the thin clear base over here as well. And then we will move on to begin our design. And we got such cool stuff in store for you guys today, guys. I'm saying we when it's just me, but. <laughs> so I'm just doing my thin clear base really fast on the pinky. And then we're gonna be coming in with a full nail on the pinky of our Carp DM, which is the Glow Minty Color. It's like a really, really light minty color from Glam & Glitz Glow Collection. 
Love it, it's one of their cream ones. And then on the ring finger, we go in with that beautiful McCart Multi-Mix Pearlescent Series Glitter Mix from Hooked On Love Kit. And then on the middle finger, we do an ombre with Perry Twinkle and our Mia Secret Nude. On the pointer, we do a marble with all those gorgeous colors. And on the thumb, we do a full nail of Blue Me Away because then at the end, I go in with my fuchsia chrome over the top of it. And oh my God, guys, when you see the pictures, you're just going to be like, oh my God, it's so pretty. It looks so dope over the blue color, the fuchsia. Just really, really nice, guys. So when you're laying this base, pay attention to how you're laying it up at that cuticle area. Up at the cuticle, you want to make sure that your product is as thin as it possibly can without looking too off in shape. So I'm just showing you now all the stuff I'm using. Isn't it gorgeous, guys? So pretty. Such, such cute colors. And they look so good together. So... I'm actually now going in with the marble on this hand. I'm using Blue Me Away and Perry Twinkle to start off at the cuticle. Then I go in with the Cutie, Blue Me Away, Perry Twinkle, and the Carp DM. And you'll see I'm using like the um, the Crystalina Mia Secret uh, Fine Glitter to go kind of throughout using the other glitters and the Unicorn Chromes to kind of pull some of that through these nails and you guys know that if you like dip your brush really wet into acrylic and then go with like a little little bit into like chromes oh my god guys they are so effective if you want to do like marble nails with that really really effective guys super effective should give it a shot definitely give it a shot I'm going to leave you guys here I don't have too much really that I need to explain once again, I will leave a list of everything I've used in the description index below, guys. I like to talk throughout the videos, but I'm actually heading out to the gym today. And possibly when I get back, maybe I'll talk a little more on here. But until then, I will see you guys in a little bit. Love you all so much, and I will see you soon. So now I'm just taking my wet brush, guys, and picking up some of that glitter with a really wet bead my chrome and kind of swiping that over the top of the marble before I encapsulate it that way those kind of veiny swirls that kind of make that marble stand out a little bit more will already be there when I go to cap and then we have nothing to worry about my pretties so moving on now we're just gonna cap that and I'm placing my bead almost at the top there kind of two-thirds of the way up and then when I place the next one, it'll be my cuticle bead. And just building that structure up, kind of midway up at that stress point area. That way when I go and add my cuticle bead, it'll be a good amount of product. It'll build up our apex. So we are just making sure that the side walls and everything are nice and tucked in. See how nice and neat that looks around the side edges? You want to make sure that your product is not too wet when you're placing it and that you've dried some of the liquid out of the back of your brush if it is too wet. Now we're going to go ahead in with our cuticle bead and we're going to go in and around that bead making sure that it's nice and tucked and pushed into our cuticle ever so slightly. You see that guys? Now we're building that natural apex just nice and neatly, not too much product. Adding a little bit more maybe in places where we might need it. But overall, as long as your glitter and your product that you use underneath is matte in appearance, you know that everything is covered appropriately. And we don't need too high of an apex because these nails are on the shorter side. And, and that is the glitter mix by McCart, guys. So this is in their Hooked on Love glitter crystal collection with the four pack of valentine stickers this was their valentine set i'm actually going to be getting in the mariposa kit soon and it's going to come with all four kits and i'm so excited about that guys i'm so excited to do another poly gel set for you guys because it has been a few videos now 
And so I'm just starting off with a very kind of moderate size, small to medium size, very wet bead, picking up glitter and making sure to push that all around the nail, making sure that it's nice and flat and thin, not too bulky in and around those edges, guys, because we are going to come back in and cap. So it's really important that you have full coverage with your glitter, but at the same time that you're not over bulking your nail to the point where you cannot cap it properly. You wanna be able to come in and around those edges with your clear acrylic so that it attaches to that nail plate surface and that tip surface. So you wanna leave some room around the edges, okay guys? And make sure you come in with wet beads of clear when you cap so that it sinks in and around those glitters doesn't have to be overly saturated but definitely wet enough so it's going to sink in and around and just go into shape naturally it's going to fall with gravity and you see how that looks guys so now we know it's in and around all of those glitters hugging it nicely and we're just going to let it do its thing gonna clean off our brush go back into our liquid and be pushing our product patting it out and pulling it where we need it and swiping off our excess and we'll come in with a cuticle bead and add to that push it up as close as we can get it above where that glitter is and tuck it nice and neatly in and around those edges and pull down at the bottom of that bead blending it into that next bead okay guys so moving along we're gonna cap this nail push our product up into place at its thinnest and most tapered and once we feel happy where it is we are going to clean and wet our brush and just start patting and pulling on our product until we are happy with the placement and we will pull off any excess and if we need to add more we will but moving on we're going to do our ombre nail now so i'm starting on that middle finger on this hand and i'm pulling my peri twinkle all the way to the bottom getting that into its shape and i'll probably i think i try and like blend the back area there or i don't i just add another little bead So if your product is kind of setting up a little bit already, you can kind of try and dig your the toe of the brush into the product ever so slightly and kind of pull on it and it will work if it's still wet enough. Um, if it's not, then you just grab another really wet small bead. Wait till it polymizes just a tiny bit. Turn your brush around, blend that back area, that joint area where that natural free edge is under your tip where you could kind of see through to it and make sure that that area is blended nicely and that you can't see too much through it because you will be able to tell when you bring your nude in and blend it in over that color. So just be mindful of that. So I added a little bit more color over there. And now I'm going in with my Mia Secret Nude and I will leave links for these products that I'm using, most of them in the description index for you below. As always, anything that I review or go over in video with you guys, I'm always leaving links for that in the description index below, ladies and gents. So I got, guys, I just love you all so much and I'm so excited that we are over 900 subbies and we're working our way to a thousand. I'm excited to get there and it's just, yeah overall very humbling experience it has taken me a while to get to this point but you know what i don't think i would change anything because i feel like sometimes it can be hard to manage life when you kind of overnight become like so much in demand i think it's a lot of responsibility it can be a lot on one person so you know i think just over time gradually getting you know working my way and really putting in the work and putting the effort in and mind you guys i started in my kitchen with just a really really cheap chintzy android phone and you know the editing was sucky i mean it's still not completely professional but 
I've definitely come a long way in the few years that I've been on here. If you go back to the beginning to now, you could definitely, definitely see the progress. So like with anything, guys, anything worth having or achieving in life, it's going to take time and effort. You know, so I just finished my swirl with that unicorn chrome and that Crystalina 001 glitter from Mia Secret. And then I go in with my Mia Secret clear acrylic polymer and I start capping in my one bead. And, you know, over time you get this, guys. It doesn't happen overnight. You can get it overnight. There are people out there that are just natural at it and using a brush just comes natural to them. So... Um, other people it takes them a little more time it took me a little longer um, and I just think because sometimes we tend to overthink things and second-guess ourselves. and I think for me that's what it was so um, yep just coming in here with my cuticle bead and adding a little bit more of an apex and then we will move on I, think I add a little bit more at the free edge Yes, and a little bit more to cover up that glitter really carefully. Make sure that we have enough of a structure there so that when we come in and file that we're not gonna take off too much of that nail. So that's super important too, guys. So just remember we're gonna come in along those edges and that back wall and you want a majority of your nail to be built and stay in shape. So now we're going in on that pinky and we are going to do a full nail of the Carp DM by Glam and Glitz. Glam and Glitz Glow Collection. And this is their Cream Glow Carp DM. And I just go in two thirds of the way up, like I did with the thumb and the other nail when I capped it. And then I will come in at that cuticle area with that cuticle bead. And then I will most likely come in with another one to just add a little more color and make sure that it's opaque enough and then we will cap. So just making sure that I am taking liquid out if I need to because if you know Glam and Glitz is a wetter system so you need more liquid obviously to use it. Um, with a drier system you want to drain a lot of your liquid. So Glam and Glitz is just the way it works is you know it's just a wetter system so you need more liquid in your brush however there is such a thing still as too much liquid so you just have to be mindful of that just make sure that um if you get like you see how i got product like in those sidewall areas the way i did just a second ago and how i was able to like clean it up i waited till it like polymized a tiny tiny bit because if you if you try to clean it up when it's still too wet it'll still make a mess. But if you go in after it's kind of like a tiny bit polymized, you'll be able to maneuver it and mold it back onto that nail nice and neatly. Um, so yeah, um, maybe on another video, I could show you guys like exactly what I mean. Like maybe I could kind of purposely make a couple mistakes as they would call them rookie mistakes. But I feel like even intermediate, even pros make mistakes still later in the game. So I don't like to say rookie mistakes because I feel like anyone, no matter how long you've been doing nails, you can still easily make mistakes. And I just feel like sometimes we feel rushed. Sometimes we want to rush. Sometimes it's just um, just certain things going on in our life that may be stressing us out. Um, maybe the client is just not particularly um, talkative and the energy is not there. You know, it could be tons of things, you know, so. Um, like I said, anybody can make a mistake. It doesn't matter how professional, how early on you are. It just, just happens, you know? We're imperfect. So I'm just trying to make sure that I am getting it as perfect as I could possibly get it with my brush without making too many mistakes. And if I do, I try my best to rectify them as soon as I possibly can without bringing too much um without getting too much product on any of my client's skin or anything like that if you get any liquid or product on the skin you want to make sure you go in right away and clean it up because 
once the person's skin like starts getting touched with all these products and stuff they can get something called contact dermatitis which is over time just getting allergic to the products because they're constantly coming into contact with it so moving on we are using now blue me away on the thumb and we're gonna do a full a full thumb of the blue me away and um, I just keep going in with my beads until it is built up properly and just putting that into place and you can actually it's actually I feel like with thumbs it's easier to build them in like three sections uh, the first bead will go up like a third of the way a little more then the second will be two-thirds and then you'll go in with your like big cuticle bead you want to make sure that these are wet yes but not too too wet just wet enough to where you could like get it right up to where you need it but just kind of dry enough to where you could mold it into place without it getting all messy and all over the skin and that way I could really get up in there with the toe of my brush and get it nice and flush to that cuticle and it's not going to give me too much of a hard time. I actually really really appreciate Glamming Blitz new color blend collection because the way it operates and the way it moves around the nail is just so effortless and um, I just really really like how they stuck to the wetter system um, and it's still a dry enough system to where you can play with it enough and mold it good and it's not going to be too too wet. Their color blend collection is like almost kind of like core color powders in a sense like they're strong enough to build up but they're also um, wet enough to use as like a paint too i like to build mine up like most of the way and then finish off by capping in like a thinner cap um depending on what i'm using if i'm using glitter then obviously i'll use thinner color glitter and then you know most of the nail will be the capping but you see how i'm kind of going at that tilt now and making sure that that was flush so if you have an issue where it's like too bulky, you can do that where you kind of tilt your brush kind of on a full 90 degree tilt in that cuticle area and make sure you're pulling downward on that product like I just did right here on the pinky. You see that? Oh my, my dog in the background, guys. Shut! Lily! Lily! Shh! Stop! Stop it! Stop! Stop it! Stop it! So, as you can see, I was able to pull off some of that product and reuse it. If your product is still wet enough and still pliable enough, you can get away with doing that. If you're used to using your product in that way. If you're not used to it, I wouldn't suggest doing it because it can harden up on you and get a little more tricky. Excuse me, you're being so rude. Stop. So... I'm just putting that cuticle bead up there now and molding that into place, making sure that it's nice and tucked in those areas. And when I'm happy with how it is placed and how it's looking, I will come in and cap it. I think I add a tiny bit in that right hand corner up at that cuticle. And then I add a tiny bit at the free edge. I know I was missing some back there in that cuticle. Yeah, just like I said, like over time, you just, you know, you kind of notice these things and you get better with the building of the nail and the way it looks and all of that. Because in the beginning, man, let me tell you, my nails used to look so like thin in the back part and then like <laughs> the free edge area would be like a bell bottom tip. It would look like a duck flare tip on all of my nails, especially the square ones. But like I said, with time you get better and I do realize I need actually like a teeny bit more in that back area, but whatever I don't get with my color, I will get with the clear acrylic and fill that in and make sure it's built properly. So have no fear. I had a little bit of lint right there, so I had to fix that. Um, I'm just cleaning up my edges, making sure everything looks good. Nothing is out of place or looking too, you know, wide or anything. So I'm moving on now to the ring finger. Once again, this is the full 
glitter nail and I'm just making sure that I'm picking up a wet very wet bead and making sure that I am pushing around that glitter nice and neatly making sure to stay a certain width and um, kind of distance away from the sides and cuticle not too too much but enough to where I could come back in and cap nicely and be able to tuck my bead in and around that glitter to where it is snatched on that tip and nail bed area and is gripping and covering all that glitter and as it's polymizing I'll go in and kind of push that bead more into place and then I'll add my cuticle bead and you know just keep capping until it is nice and covered now we're going in with Perry Twinkle for our middle finger ombre once again and we're gonna turn our brush around quickly and blend that back area you see what I mean guys nice and blended so we will add another bead of our Perry Twinkle and we're gonna make sure that we add enough and we're gonna mold it into place and now we're gonna turn our brush around a second or no we're gonna actually dig into it and blend it that way that's another way that you guys could blend if your brush is if the product is still pliable and wet enough you can dig the toe into that part and blend it nicely so I'm adding a little tiny bit more because it was just too thin um, and I'm gonna go in and blend that area that back area before I go in with the nude so don't worry I'm gonna go in, add my bead of nude, and I think I, see, I feel like I added too much on that first one. Now you can rectify this, so you can fix it guys, don't worry, just, you know, as long as it's wet enough still, you could just keep stroking on that and it'll fade naturally with you pulling product off of the nail, so just kind of naturally going in now with our beautiful beads. And I add a tiny bit more up there, getting our body of it into place because this is a core strength powder, the nude by Mia Secret. So uh, when we come into cap, we don't need to add a lot to this nail, just enough to make sure that our pigment here that I'm using, this is the Unicorn Chrome and I do dip my brush into my clear acrylic and use it and dip it into the chrome and just put it onto the nail and then I go into that crystallina glitter and use that on the swirl as well and then I'll use a little bit of that McCart hooked on love glitter mix dot some of the tinier pearlescent bits on that swirl not the big pieces because I don't want the big pieces on there just the tiny bits and then we will cap it move on to the pointer which is a marble with glitter and then we will do the thumb which is a full blew me away and at the ends we do the chrome the fuchsia chrome but i don't do that on camera so i don't think i did it on camera anyway if i can find it i will add it at the very end if not you will see the pictures anyways and you'll be able to see the thumb i left a picture of it in the end for you guys so i really really hope that you guys enjoyed this set it really came out super pretty i really love how they came out I used D&D &D No Wipe Top Coat as I usually do now and my Mia Secret Liquid and Clear and my Glam and Glitz Colors and Mia Secret Colors and my Born Pretty Pigments and McCart Glitter Mixes. So now I'm going in with that marble guys and I'm going in with Perry Twinkle and Cutie and that's that corally pink color. So, so pretty very very pretty so now we're going in with carp dm cutie blew me away and peri twinkle to create that really really nice swoop of a marble right there kind of bringing that down the nail ever so nice like you gotta let it polymize you know before you try and like pull all the colors because then they'll just soup together and make like a brownish color um or just a nasty looking dark brownish purple, you know? So I'm just kind of pushing those into place once they've polymized and set up a little bit. 
and um, then I do the swirl at the bottom with Cutie Carp DM Blew Me Away and Perry Twinkle once again and I'll wait till it sets up a little bit kind of push it into place then start adding some of that unicorn chrome pigment throughout and I think I add some of the crystallina glitter as well see that unicorn chrome how it looks when you just so nice when you like dip it in with like acrylic and you use it on the nail like on a marble it's just so effective now I go in with some of that glitter Lena, very pretty and now I'm gonna cap it and I go up two-thirds of that way guys same thing and then we'll do the full thumb of the blue and that's about it I'll see you guys in my next video don't forget to subscribe if you're new here don't forget to smash that like button and share if you don't mind just so we can get to a thousand subbies faster don't forget to leave a comment if you like this set, definitely hit and smash that like button, guys. Show me some love if you don't mind, okay? Leave me some constructive criticism, some advice, I don't know, ideas maybe. Whatever you want, guys, okay? I love you all so much, and I will see you in my next one, guys. Bye!